the moment, are important. Others just happen without ceremony. I don't think that makes them any less important. You see, each of us is made of our moments. Think about it. Without them, what do we have? Someone once said, we are all stardust, referring to us being made of little bits of matter, recycled again and again. I tend to think of things a little differently. I tend to think each of us are our moments. Some of them, like the pictures we use to remember them, are a little fuzzy, but they're no less real. And we're fortunate to have them because we become them and they become us. First, you became two, then we became three and four, and before you know it, 10. And today, in this moment, we all wanna thank you, mom and dad, for that first moment 50 years ago and everyone since. The story goes that mom and dad wanted to adopt another child to add to their family of three, and that when they finally heard that there was going to be a baby girl available, they found out that mom was pregnant with me. So long I came into a March snowstorm on March 7, 1973. The parts of my childhood about mom and dad that I believe have had the greatest impact on me are their commitment to family and friends. Mom and dad have always had a lot of close friends. We grew up surrounded by their closest Grand Rapids friends, being Barb and Joe. And of course, there was lay girls. I up listening to mom and her lay girls friends telling stories. Their biggest storytelling event of the year was at Christmas time when they would get together for a Christmas card reading party. They would each prepare and perform some type of fine arts presentation for their annual Christmas card. Only this wasn't the Christmas card that they sent out to their broader group of friends and acquaintances where they gloated about perfect families and rewarding jobs. Instead, their performances shared the hard knocks truth about their previous years, telling of cheating husbands and adolescents run amok. One of Lay Girls, Ann Mulder, used to bring her children to our house and say, this is what the all-American family looks like. Two parents and two children, and they eat together every night. I am sure Lay Girls are raising their glasses this year to the one of them that has made it through 50 years. For much of my childhood, I also remember Mom sitting on the counter bar stool with Marnie and Ann drinking Manhattans and playing Boggle. They used to get into heated arguments about who was cheating. I never understood how you could cheat at Boggle, but I guess sometimes they must have tried to make up words because I remember the dictionary coming out for verification on many occasions. I would listen to their stories and tell myself, you have to remember what they're saying because one day when you're older, you'll be able to understand what they're talking about. take a minute to let you know how much we appreciate you and the fine example of a loving marriage that you've been to Ken and I. We admire your dedication to one another and to our family. So thank you for being such a great example. I hope that we have 50 as well. Here's a toast to the lucky couple with their 50th anniversary. Emily and I would be very happy and very lucky to um, celebrate 50, our 50th anniversary as well and uh, just we're glad that we can all do it here together as a family and uh, just raise your toast and a drink to Dick and Marie.
love to visit Grandma and Papa at any one of their three houses. P.S. I love you, Grandma and Papa. Happy 50th anniversary. Bye. Happy 50th anniversary. Grandma and Papa, I'm going to also sing a funny song to you. I love you. Happy 50th anniversary, Grandma and Grandpa. Happy 50th anniversary, Grandpa and Grandma. I hope you have a good one. years of marriage. And not each of us is lucky enough to share so much of our lives together. The good and the rest. Every part of it, though, just as important as the rest. For those of us included in your moments, well, we're pretty lucky too. Happy anniversary.